I'd like to show you how you can use render layers to maximize your efficiency when it comes time to render your scene. The idea with render layers is it allows you to assign assets in your scene to a specific render layer. That way you can tell Maya which assets you want to render without having to render everything in the scene. So one of the nice things about render layers is that you can tell Maya what you want to assign to a specific render layer. So if I only want to render the desk, I can select that and assign it to a render layer. If I only want to select my character, I can put that in a separate render layer. So probably the most simple implementation of render layers would be to separate your background from your foreground. And this is something that you would see in a traditional 2D cell animation. Uh, you don't want to have to redraw the background for every frame, so you put that on a separate layer. So the same principle applies here in Maya. You can assign your background to a separate render layer and only render the background once, even though your character here in the foreground is animated and moving, what the assets in the background are static, so we'll render one frame of the background and then have the multiple animations of the character in the foreground rendered in a separate layer. So I'm going to come over here and select my render layer to make it active. And you can see by default the master layer is enabled and turned on. This is a required layer. Even if I select it and come down here and say delete layer, you cannot remove the master layer. So that's always on by default. So what I'm going to do in my perspective view is tumble around and zoom out here so that I can get a, a kind of a bird's eye view, almost a top view here. And I want to start to designate what assets I want to appear in the foreground and which ones I want to appear in the background render layers. So if I draw a pick box over my assets here, and I'm going to try to zoom out here to get the lights and the set, I draw a pick box around the assets that are in the background. You can see my character is not selected, but the background set is. Now that I've got that selected, I'm going to come over here and if I click on this far right icon, it will create a new render layer and assign the selected objects to that. So I do that and render layer shows up here once. I'm going to double click on that so I can rename that and I'm going to call it BG for background. So I'm going to do the same thing again now, but this time I'm going to uh, create a render layer that just contains the foreground character. But I want to make sure I get all of the lights that affect the foreground character. So I'll show you how I'll do that. I'm going to draw a pick box around my foreground character and his assets. And then just to make sure that I get the lights as well, I'm opening up my outliner here and I'm going to command click uh, all of the lights in the scene. That way I can confirm that I've got all my lights plus the foreground character. And now I'm going to assign that to its own render layer. If I double click that layer and call it FG for foreground, now I've got that asset as well. So if I tumble around here again, now you can see I've got all of the lights in this foreground layer. If I come down to my background layer and select that, you can see I've got the background layer. And then once again, if I select the master layer, it's got everything in it. So now we can start to use these render layers in our render settings. If I click on one of the render settings dialog boxes here, it brings up my render settings for that layer. If you look here in the render settings dialog box, you can see I can select which render layer I want to affect. The foreground layer, or I can select the background layer, or the master layer. And as I do that, it's also selecting the assets that appear in that layer. The next thing I'd like to set up is in my file output section. What I would like to do is create a separate folder in the render directory for each one of my render layers. So what I'd like to do is set it up so that the foreground layer assets get rendered into a foreground layer folder. The way I can do that is by right clicking inside of the option box for the file name prefix. In the drop down list I'm going to select the render layer name as a prefix. If I put a forward slash after that, that's going to create a separate folder. Then I'm going to right click again and choose the scene name uh, of this particular scene is 020999, so that will be added to it. But then if I put an underscore and right click again and add the layer name, it will also show up. So there'll be a folder here 
for the rendered layer image, then inside of that folder it will come out with the scene name and the scene name associated with the render layer here. The last thing I'm going to do in my render settings is to create what's called a render layer override. In here I've got uh, the render layer that is set up for the foreground and we designated that to be the character because the character is actually animated. We've got the other layer, if I come down here and select the background layer, there is no animation in the background layer. So I actually do not need to render out a sequence here that starts at frame 101 and ends at 165. I'm going to create an override by right clicking on the end frame and choosing create layer override. Now when I type in frame 101 in this layer, that is the entire frame range. It's only going to render one frame in my background layer. And I can confirm that by coming up here and switching to the foreground layer. That layer still has all the animation of uh, the 65 frames there. But when I switch back to the background layer, that little orange highlight indicates that that has an override on it. It's only going to render that one frame. So let's see how this looks when we rendered it. I've designated my renderable camera as the shot camera. So if I close my render settings here and show you what that shot camera looks like, I'm going to select that in my panels. And so here again, I've got my background assets. And then if I switch up here to my foreground assets, uh, I'm just seeing my foreground character. And let's submit this using the render uh, batch render. So my render is started and as soon as that finishes we can switch over to the rendered images folder and see what the output looks like. So I've switched over to my images folder for the current Maya project and you can see it's created for me two folders, one for the background and one for the foreground. If I select the background layer you can see there's only one image in that folder and that's uh, because we set that override and so that's just the background information from that layer. When I select the foreground layer you can see that it's created the image sequence for me and if I just do a quick look at that it's just the foreground layer with no background. What we can do now is combine them in After Effects to see what the final composite looks like. So I've got a copy of After Effects open here and I'm going to switch over to my finder window so I can see the rendered directory from my Maya project and there's the background and foreground layers. I'm going to shift select both of those folders and then drag and drop them onto the After Effects project window and when I do that After Effects is smart enough to recognize that there's only one image in the background and that the foreground layer is a sequence of images. So I'm going to take that foreground layer and I'm going to drag and drop it onto the new composition icon and when I do that After Effects makes a new comp based on the resolution and frame length of that particular layer. So I can scrub through this layer and see that my character is animated but he's missing the background. So if I come up here to the background layer and drag and drop that beneath the foreground layer it shows up here and now I've got that behind him. But what you'll notice is as I drag past the first frame the background blinks off and that's because the background is only one frame long. If I attempt to drag out the length of this clip you can see it's uh, locked to just one frame. So there's a trick that we can do to select this background layer and then come up to the layer menu and choose time freeze frame and what that does is it puts a time remap effect onto that layer. Now that that's enabled, I can click on the end of that clip and drag it out to match the length of the existing composition. And now when I scrub through my timeline, you can see the background uh, extends behind the foreground animation. So you can see how this is an excellent use of the Maya render layers feature and how you can utilize it and save time by only rendering a single image when it's not animated and then bringing it all together in the final composition. One final advantage of rendering out in layers from Maya is the fact that now that I've got this rendered, if I decide I want to make a change to the background, I can do that without having to go back into Maya and re-render that background. So if I want to make a tweak to the background here, and suppose I want to do a little uh, color correction with the Levels tool, uh, I can adjust the brightness uh, of the background without changing the foreground. Same thing if there's a hitch in my animation, I don't want to have to re-render the background. I can redo the foreground animation and adjust the timing in the animation without having to re-render the background. So this approach also allows you to isolate the problem areas in your project and allows you to fix those without having to re-render the entire project. If you only need to tweak the background, you can adjust that separately than the foreground. And again, that saves you time during the rendering.